Can you get a DUI if you're not even driving? Yeah, you can. Hi, I'm Northern Virginia criminal defense attorney Scott Nolan, and I'm here to talk to you about operating under the influence. In Virginia, as in most states, the crime that we normally call DUI, which stands for driving under the influence, or sometimes DWI, driving while intoxicated, isn't really that at all. If you read the statute, it doesn't say anything about driving. It talks about operating a vehicle. Now, operating simply means to turn on the electrical machinery of the car. And there's a famous case in Virginia where, the, and by the way, it's not just Virginia, it's every state. There's just a case like this in every state. But the case in Virginia was a woman who was in a car, in her front yard, that had no wheels. It was up on blocks, it literally could not go anywhere. And yet, she was intoxicated when the police arrived. She had the radio on, because she'd had a fight with her husband, and she went outside to sit in the old car and think, and she turned on the radio. Guess what? Guilty of DUI. My client Susan has a case very much like this. She went out for a night with her girlfriends and she drove up from Southern Virginia, parked her car at a gas station, and then got in the car with some friends. They drove, not her. And they went out and uh, they all had a little bit to drink. Not a lot, just a little. Now, about a week earlier, Susan had been prescribed some new medication and this was her second day of taking it. And it was the first time she'd combined it with alcohol. Uh, as her evening out with her friends ended and her driver dropped her back off at her car, Susan realized she wasn't feeling well at all and understood that this probably had something to do with the alcohol and the new medication. Uh, she felt like she really shouldn't drive. That wouldn't be safe. And yet she was about two hours from home. So this was in a, a cold February. She called her mother on her cell phone and said, Mom, please come pick me up. Well, that's what she intended to do. But Mom didn't answer the phone. So Susan got into the car, turned on the heater and the radio, and sat there in the gas station. Did not drive the vehicle. The vehicle never moved. She called mom again, mom still didn't answer, and Susan did exactly what you, the citizens, would want her to do. She sat there and waited, intending to call mom again in another half an hour or so. Well, the owner of the gas station felt the need to report that somebody was sitting in a car in the gas station. She was parked in a marked parking spot. She was not at the gas pump or anything like that but she was just sitting there. She wasn't passed out. She was just sitting in her car. Nonetheless, the police came by, noticed, they said, the odor of alcohol, and got her out of the car. They arrested her on DUI. That car had never moved. The engine had never turned on, and only the radio and the heater were on. Now, any law school student will tell you that's operating the vehicle and she is technically guilty. And for that, she's going to get a criminal record and she's going to have to have an ignition interlock in order to drive anywhere. She certainly won't go to jail, but she will have a permanent criminal record for the grand crime of listening to the radio. Is that fair? Anybody anybody, including the judge who's likely to convict her, knows it's not fair. All I can really say about this is that this is a point where the law and common sense don't even come close. And I believe that a jury will see this in a much better light, in a much more reasonable light than will a judge. I'm not blaming the judges. The law is clear and the law on this point is just dumb. So the moral of the story is, don't turn on the electrical machinery of the car. Don't listen to the radio. Don't turn on the heater or the air conditioner. If you had to, you could go inside the gas station to warm up, wear your coat, walk around, do what you need to to stay warm. Don't turn on the electrical machinery of the car. And perhaps most importantly, 
call or write your legislator and get them to change this stupid and frankly dangerous law. I'm Scott Nolan. If you have any questions about this or any other area of the law, please feel free to give me a call. And you have a great day.